Hey folks, it's Dag, welcome to my channel. If you're new to my channel, folks, I'm obsessed with model aviation, full-scale aviation, anything that flies. And um, a lot of you who follow me know I do the ginormous scale airplanes like my MSL-1 and my MSL-2. I'm flying the Bronco now. But what I'm doing in this video here, folks, is somebody sent me a really neat email. His name's Mike. And he says, could I do a top 10 like benefits of being an RC pilot or being a part of model aviation? So I'm going to give you those top 10 things real quick. So folks, first of all, I want to, do, want to tell you that's really cool about this hobby is I never would have thought in my life that I'd have a six pound 100 kV motor in my hand that is capable of running continuously at 6, 000, I'm sorry, 7,600 watts and peak out between 12 and 14,000 watts for about 10 or 15 seconds. That is one of the coolest things of this hobby. And to get to this point in my life means I had to learn a lot of really cool things, right? So, number one, um, hands-on STEM learning, okay? Folks, we learn so much about aerodynamics, electronics, engineering, mathematics. When you're a part of model aviation and really dig into it, where you scratch build your own kits, or you buy an ARF and put it together, or you buy a kit at a swap meet, or you... Uh, fly drones or fly helis right. whatever you're flying you're going to take care of it you're going to do a little maintenance you might put it together you are always learning and if you get totally into scratch building then you truly get into to design and engineering so that's number one number two it absolutely improves your hand and eye coordination I know that sounds wonky you I was asked to give a top 10 list that was my number two Folks, there's something about once that radio kind of becomes part of your body that you're really not even thinking about what you're doing with the sticks. You're doing it because you become kind of one with the airplane. It's like the Zen thing between that radio, your hand, and the airplane. I'm just kidding. But the thing is, folks, I think it keeps our minds really sharp flying model airplanes. Okay, uh, that's number two for me. Number three, a stress reliever. Now, people are going to go, what are you talking about? You're, you know, my Bronco is $5,333. I'm doing a video about that. Can you believe I'm flying a $5,333.50, I think it was, airplane? And yes, I know I'm a nerd. I took an Excel spreadsheet because I wanted to know how much I really spent on it. Last time I do that, I don't want to know that I spent $5,000 on a model airplane. But here's the thing, folks. And, and you could ask other pilots this. When you fly a full-scale aviation airplane, there's something very therapeutic. It's almost like um, meditation. When you fly a model airplane, it's almost exactly like that. Folks, when I was younger and dumber, I used to be a hardcore skydiver. I had over 600 skydives. And there was something about the jump that was almost like meditation. I know that sounds insane. But you didn't think about ex-wives. You didn't think about mortgages. You didn't think about anything except the skydive. Okay, and, and folks, it was one of the most peaceful times of my life when I used to skydive. Now, sure, your adrenaline's going to start going up when you got to deploy the parachute. Because the first thing you're going to do is see if you've got a good chute. Do you have a line over? Do you have line twist? Are you going to deal with something? 99.9% .9 of the time, there's not a problem. If there is, you have a reserve chute. What scared me the most about skydiving was that piece of junk airplane that took us up to altitude it had to meet the minimum of faa had all the seats taken out except the pilot seat it was an elevator going up and down eight to ten times a day and as a full-scale pilot those airplanes scared me but skydiving model aviation full-scale aviation it was almost like therapy for me okay number four you become a problem solver or what we call macgyvers folks you will not own a model airplane and not have to bend the landing gear back or fix a motor mount or have a servo that's got loose. You are going to slowly learn how to problem solve and fix things and be creative in how you fix it. Folks, I was at a fly-in one time with a really piece of junk styrofoam airplane that I loved to fly. I had so much fun with it, but it was a really a piece of junk. And the thing is, the firewall had come off and I didn't have any epoxy, so I took clear packing tape and I taped the whole front of it. And it, it lasted and it worked. But folks, we, we as model aviators become very creative, but we also do that, in our, do that in our normal lives. I kid you not, folks. You know, I started in 1973 flying control line models. And, you know, when I was 17, started flying gliders and 18, started flying powered models. 
in in 73 when I was 10 years old, folks, all the way up to 2005, 25, gosh, screw that up. Um, think about the things I've learned from model aviation. And I use a lot of those practical experiences in my real life stuff. Um, community and friendship. One of the coolest things about this hobby, folks, and, and I want to be clear here because there's going to be people saying, oh, you're full of crap, Damon. Here's the thing. A long time ago, there used to be this weird thing that the old farts, which I'm one now, didn't like the younger people because they were showing up with, you know, helicopters. They were showing up with gliders that they say would take away radio frequencies. There used to be something about our community where there was a lot, a lot of just negativity. That's, for me, I haven't seen that in years, probably 15 years. The club I belong to, everybody is so cool. And folks, the cool thing about belonging to a club is you get surrounded by people that are doing really cool things that you can kind of look at and go, wow, I didn't think of doing it that way. Folks, I've always said the reason I've been successful in life is because I try to surround myself with people that are smarter than me. And when you're in model aviation, that whole community is going to have people a lot smarter than you and me. But we learn from them. And it, it's, it's a really cool thing. Um, number six, a pathway to full-scale aviation. Folks, it was me flying model airplanes that made me want to fly a giant scale airplane. I remember this clearly. I don't know how old I was. I was probably 12 or 13 years old. I used to live in the downwind um, of the approach for a airport called Brookside. And it's been long gone. It's a vinyl village now. It's horrible when these airports get destroyed just to build a vinyl village of houses. But when I was a kid, I lay on my back and I could see the Cessnas you know, up in training flights go right over my head. And I remember this day going, one day I'm going to fly that airplane. And I'd already been flying model airplanes. And the more I flew model airplanes, I'm like, one day. And I did. When I was in my mid-20s, I got my pilot's license. One reason I don't fly so much full scale today, folks, is it's just ungodly expensive. Having a hangar, having the airplane, having the annual on the airplane, um... But I've had people argue that my model aviation costs just as much as they're flying, but I would disagree with them. I've got a friend who just bought golf clubs that cost like 10 grand, or maybe bought golf clubs in a season pass, or I don't know anything about golf. And folks, I'm not knocking it, but every time I see a golf course, I can't imagine chasing balls because I see that golf course as a bunch of runways for model airplanes. <laughs> and I'm not knocking people's hobbies. I've got a friend that has an $80,000 bass boat. Um... Number seven, a, a way to experience risk. Folks, one thing I learned about NPD, new product development, that's what I do for a living, came from model aviation. When I started designing and scratch building my own airplanes, the MSL-1 had a 197-inch wing. The MSL-2 had a 188-inch wing. Um, I've got my Bronco that's an ARF, 108-inch wing. When, when I look at putting that ARF together, it was kind of a piece of cake for me. And an R, folks, so you know, you basically get the airframe and then you have to put your radio and servos and motors and ESCs and everything in it. But it was all of my scratch building that opened up my eyes to all these different options or different ways you can do things on airplanes. And unless we take risk in life, we normally don't progress. Folks, I don't know if it was Steve Jobs or whoever said it, but they said, when you aim for perfection and fail, you're still failing above the rest. So you learn something. And in model aviation, there's two types of risk. There's risk in designing an airframe that's a piece of crap and it won't work. Then there's risk in me being stupid flying down the runway inverted, which I used to do. I used to have a really neat Carl Goldberg chipmunk. I'd fly down the runway inverted and we'd stack, stack up three pop cans, soda cans, and I'd try to hit the top can. Well, it didn't work exactly that good each time. So uh, that was taking risk. I think it's a neat way to learn risk and not to be afraid of risk, uh, model aviation. Number four, it's, it's an outdoor recreation and there's travel involved. So I love being outdoors, of course. And, and I know there's places you can fly indoors and you've got little bitty planes, that's neat. Um, and, and I'm not knocking that. I don't knock any part of model aviation because whatever you do, you do it because it turns you on. 
But being outside in the sun or the fresh air or in the wide openness, most of the time where we have a field where we fly at, we're actually flying folks where there's like unlimited ob obstructions, okay? Um, another thing, folks, is we drive to fly-ins or RC uh, events. Like, I'm only an hour from the headquarters in Muncie, Indiana. Anytime there's a big event up there, I go and watch or I go and participate or I go and just hang out. Fort Wayne has a big fly-in I try to go to. Missed it this year. There's fly-ins all over Indiana because I live in Indiana. And I actually go to a fly-in down in America's Georgia every year in uh, America, Georgia, America's Georgia down in, uh, we call it CEF. I've been going to it, I think, for 15 years now. I missed one because I had uh, food poisoning. But I love going to these fly-ins because you meet other people. You meet really smart people, and you get to see really neat airplanes. Um, number nine, uh, it's an inspiration for a, a career. I met a really cool kid who flies drones and some foamies, and we started talking, and he's getting a degree in robotics. He's working with robots, and it all came from model aviation. In model aviation, folks, we learn so much about aerospace, engineering, mathematics. We learn so many cool things. So it could be an inspiration for whatever your career is going to be. And then number 10, it is just fun to do. It's flat out exciting to do. Once you learn to fly and you feel comfortable in your own skin and the own aircraft you're flying, there is, to me, folks, going to the field, I get set up, I get my planes out, charge them up. There's nothing more fun than flying model airplanes. And there's nothing more rewarding because the more we fly, the more experience we get and the, and the more comfortable we feel. And you can move into bigger and faster planes. My Bronco is a beast at 48 pounds. And it is just absolute pure magic to fly. It's so exciting. So that was my top 10 list, folks. Oh, and then I want to talk about famous people. Okay? You, you would, most of you RC people watching me may already know this. But Burt Rutan. You know, built the uh, space plane that uh, was the first to break, what, the Kármán line and was, was a civilian a project. Burt Rutan used to build all of his prototypes as model airplanes and fly them first before he built the full-scale airplane. Neil Armstrong, huge RC pilot. Um, Hoot Gibson, the shuttle pilot. I've actually met him up at the AMA field one time. Um, huge RC pilot. Uh, John Glenn was into model aircraft. There are so many people, and I'm forgetting all the names now, and of course I didn't write them down here, but Google how many famous pilots and aeronautical engineers had model aviation background. And folks, it's, it's amazing how many aeronautical engineers and designers had model airplane backgrounds. Okay? So that's it, folks. I hope you enjoy this video. Please like and subscribe. And folks, 80% of you haven't subscribed. I got little algorithms on YouTube that tells me that. If you want to see my updates, you want to know when I'm posting videos, like and subscribe and turn on notifications. And if you're on, if you're on the mobile app, do me a favor, hit the hype. Because the hype tells YouTube algorithms that you like aviation or you're here for some reason and you like my video. If you don't, don't hype it. Don't lie. But if you like the video, hype it, okay? Rock on, everybody. Have a fantastic day. And I've got a bunch more really cool videos coming up. So stay tuned. Take care. Bye-bye.